Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is section 2.4, complex numbers. So today we're going to be talking about some new numbers, which we call the imaginary unit, or I. Sometimes when we have a quadratic like this one, uh, f of x equals x squared plus 1, you can see this graph. There are no solutions here, are there? There's no real solutions. It doesn't cross this x-axis at all. And so what do we have is we have non-real solutions, or what we call imaginary numbers, or complex numbers. And so this was developed by a guy named um, uh, Descartes. René Descartes. <laughs> Um, it was made really famous by a guy, actually one of my favorite mathematicians, a guy named Euler, Leonard Euler. And you can see this guy, if we set this function equal to 0, we have x squared is equal to negative 1. And then we square root it, which means x is equal to the square root of negative 1. And you can see there are no real solutions here. There's no place where it crosses the x-axis. And so they developed a thing called complex numbers. There's uh, Descartes right there. He is one good-looking guy, huh, ladies? Um, everyone wanted his numbers, but they were a little too complex. So the what we found is i, which we call the imaginary number, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, which means if you have the square root of negative 9, well, the square root of negative, this is really the square root of negative 1, times the square root of 9, square root of negative 1, which is called i, square root of 9 is called 3, so it is 3i. If we had the square root of negative 25, yeah, you know what that would be. It would be 5i, because that i stands for that negative, which means we also know i squared is equal to negative 1. And the standard form for complex numbers is this. This is something to keep in mind, is we put our real numbers first, then we put our non-real numbers last, so our imaginary numbers. So our real numbers go first, a, plus any kind of imaginary numbers after that. We call that standard form. Okay, so let's do some adding and subtracting of our complex numbers. So we're going to add all of our real numbers. So you can see in the first one we have 3 plus 2, that's 5. We have negative 1i plus 3i, that ends up becoming 2i, and that's in standard form. We're going to add all of our real numbers. Remember, if you have a negative, distribute that negative to everyone. So that negative makes him positive, makes him negative. Okay, and now we can go and do our work. So we have 3 plus 2 minus 5. That equals 0, doesn't it? Then we have negative 3i, positive 1i, which is negative 2i. So our answer is negative 2i right there. And then this one, you can see again, if you have a negative, distribute that negative to everyone in here. Make him a positive. Now you look at all your real numbers. 3 plus 4, that's 7. Minus 7, that's 0. We have 2i minus i, that's 1i minus i, that ends up becoming 0 overall, 0 overall. Uh, let's take a look at this one. This one we have so the square root of negative 4, that's 2i, plus we have negative 4 minus the square root of negative 4, that's 2i. So here we have 2i minus 2i, that cancels each other out, we're left with negative 4, or a real number right there. Uh, let's take a look at multiplying complex numbers. This is a little bit more difficult, but it's something that you want to be really good at. So here we have the square root of negative 4. That's called 2i. And we're multiplied by the square root of negative 16. That's 4i. And so I'm taking 2i times 4i. So 2 times 4 is 8. i times i is i squared. And remember, what is i squared equal to? i squared is equal to negative 1, so that ends up giving me negative 8 overall. Now this one, we have to do a little bit of foiling. So first we're going to take negative, or sorry, 2 times 4, that's 8. Then we do 2 times 3i, that's 6i. Then we're going to do negative i times 4, that's negative 4i. And then negative i times 3, that's negative 3i squared. Okay, and This negative 3i squared, remember i squared is negative 1. So this guy becomes positive 3, doesn't it? And so, because negative 3i squared, we know i squared is negative 1, that is just positive 3, which means 8 and the 3 add together to make 11, okay? We add our imaginary numbers together and we get 2i, and it is in standard form right there. Anytime you do this foiling on uh, imaginary numbers, the first set 
okay, this guy, this first set right here, and this last set right there are going to give you real numbers because you're going to have i squared. The middle numbers are going to give you your imaginary numbers, okay? Here we're distributing, so we have 4i times negative 1, that's negative 4i. We have 4i times 5i, that's 20i squared. What's 20i squared the same thing as? Is negative 20 because i squared is negative 1 and we have minus 4i, we're always going to put the imaginary number behind, that is in standard form right there. And then this last one, we have 3 plus 2i times 3 plus 2i. And so we have 3 plus 2i and 3 plus 2 times 3 plus 2i because that's 3 plus 2i squared, so I got to do some foiling. So again, the first and the last are going to give me real numbers, so 3 times 3 is 9, I'm going to do the last one. I'm going to do a little bit out of order here. So 2i times 2i, that's 4i squared. Those are going to give me my real numbers. Now look at the middle numbers. We have 3 times 2i, that's 6i, and we have 2i times 3, that's 6i right there. And so look at my real numbers right here. What is 4i squared the same thing as? It's negative 4. So that ends up giving me 5 plus 12i and that is in standard form right there. Multiplying complex numbers, okay? We also have a thing called complex conjugates. You're gonna wanna know how to do multiplying by the conjugate. We're gonna be using this all year long. So this is called a complex conjugate. So we have a plus bi, so its conjugate would be a minus bi, which means three minus five i, three plus five i, would be its complex conjugate. Okay, and so anytime we have a complex number on your denominator, you can't have complex numbers on your denominator. So what you have to do is you have to multiply by its complex conjugate, okay, on the top and the bottom. So we're going to multiply by 4 plus 2i on the bottom, 4 plus 2i on the top, okay. And I'll show you why we're going to do this complex conjugate thing. Okay. It'll make a little bit of sense when we finish this problem, and I'll point it out. So let's go to the denominator first. We have 4 times 4, that's 16. Remember, the first and the last in our foiling is going to give us real numbers. So negative 2i times positive 2i is negative 4i squared. Okay. Now, the nice thing about this is the reason we multiply by a complex conjugate is this first guy and the last guy gives us this real number right here. The middle numbers, when we do our middle numbers here, when we multiply by our middle ones, is we have 4 times positive 2i, negative 2i times 4, those cancel each other out. That's why we're doing our complex conjugates, is it cancels the middle number out. So we are left with just real numbers, okay? Take a look at what we're left with on our denominator. What do we know negative 4i squared is? Remember, i squared equals negative 1. So that's really positive 4. So we're left with 20 on our denominator. Okay, You can see how we went from having an, a complex number, an imaginary number on our denominator, to just having 20, which is a real number on our denominator. Okay, Now we also have to do our numerator. We don't care if there's an imaginary number on our numerator. So, And you're like, I don't really care if I have imaginary numbers. but we're, we got to do it anyway. So we have, I'm going to do the first and last. Remember, 2 times 4, that's 8. 3i times 2i, that's 6i squared. Remember, I did the first and the last because that's going to give me real numbers. The middle numbers, the middle multipliers, the, the oi, the o and the i, the outer and the inner of foiling is going to give me my uh, complex numbers. So I have 2 times 2i, that's 4i. 3i times 4, that's 12i, okay? So what are we left with? Remember, i squared is negative 1, so this is really negative 6 right here. 8 minus 6 is 2. And what are we left with here is 16i. So we have 2 plus 16i all over 20. Now, you can see we can cancel something out. We can divide every single thing by 2. So we have 1 plus 8i over 10. 1 plus 8i over 10. Or, some people like to call that one-tenth plus four-fifths i, because that's truly in our standard form for complex numbers, okay? One last thing is, 
how do we plot complex numbers? Well, the nice thing about plot, plotting comp complex numbers is it is really easy. The real axis is our x-axis. The imaginary axis is our y-axis. So you can see how here, for this one right here, we have two in real numbers, so we go two this way, and we have three in the imaginary numbers, so three high. So this is two plus three high right there. Two in the real, three in the imaginary. Really simple, isn't it? Take a look at this one. We have negative one in the real, positive two i in the imaginary. So that's negative one plus two i right there. Here, this next one, four. That's just a real number. So we're gonna do four. There's four. Pretty easy, right? And last but not least, let's do our negative three i. We get negative three i because that's on the imaginary scale. So he's negative three i. Really easy for plotting complex numbers. And that is complex numbers. MrAiden.com. Take it easy, guys. Bye.